So I just got notified. My uh, surgery is first thing Monday morning, tomorrow morning at 9.15. Have to be there at 8.15. And I'm going to take you along with me. I'm going to show you as much as I can of the pre-op, the surgery itself, the post-op. I'm actually a little more nervous than I thought I would be, which is weird. Maybe not. I mean, it is surgery, but, um, you know, although this is a special lens they'll be implanting, cataract surgery itself is performed, I think, two million times annually in the U.S. So, you know, it's a, it's a relatively common routine surgery. Um, I think I have a good surgery center. I know I have a good ophthalmologist, but, you know, I recently had surgery on my nose and I did everything I thought I was supposed to do. It got infected. So, you know, stuff happens. So I guess that's why I'm a little nervous. Plus, I'm just kind of wondering, what is my vision actually going to be like with this new lens? I don't know. It'll be interesting to find out. So come along. See what happens. Let's do this thing. So it's the next day, and we are now on our one-hour early morning drive to the surgery center. I waited until the end of August to have my surgery because I really didn't want to have to deal with the whole intense summer sun here in Pennsylvania during the LAL process and the UV light adjustment. I arrived at the surgery center and got all the paperwork finished. Hi, do you have any allergies to any medications? No. And then it was back to the pre-op area in a set of four drops. These drops will numb and dilate my eye. Now they inserted an IV for the anesthesia. This fine nurse anesthetist will be administering it in the surgical suite and be monitoring me throughout. And it was time for my pre-op meeting with my surgeon, ophthalmologist, Dr. Brian Schaefer. Time for the meeting in pre-op. Hello. Hello, Lisa. This pre-op meeting serves two functions. The first is that we need to go over any questions you may have. The second is that I need to sign any necessary paperwork and make a little mark above your right eye, just so that we all know which eye we're doing and there's no confusion once we roll back there. Excellent. Questions. After Dr. Schaefer answered all my questions. So here, I'm gonna have you sign with me the consent for surgery. And then, after my eye was sufficiently numb and dilated, it was time to roll back to the operating room. It's game time! That's good, let's do this! That's Terry over there. Hey, Terry. <laughs> nice to meet you all. Got so. it. Then Dr. Schaefer and his surgical team took charge and performed their magic over the next 15 minutes. This was my actual light adjustable lens. During this 15 minutes, I was awake, able to talk and ask questions, follow commands, awake and aware, but with absolutely no pain or discomfort. The team continued my prep, numbing the eye more, cleaning the area, inserting a speculum to keep the eye open, draping the eye, and then the bright overhead light was moved into place and Dr. Schaefer began in earnest. I'll let him take over from here. This is Dr. Brian Schaefer narrating a cataract surgery with implantation of the light adjustable lens. In this video, I'll highlight the important steps that are unique about the LAL. The first step is to create the paracentesis. This is a one millimeter incision on the side of the cornea. And through that, we introduce lidocaine to numb the eye. I use what's called omidria, which is a non-steroidal to help keep the pupil dilated throughout the surgery. The next step is introduction of viscoelastic, which is a gel that helps keep the eye formed during subsequent steps. I use the cannula of that viscoelastic to stabilize the eye while I make a 2.4 millimeter incision, otherwise known as the main incision. 
Through this, I introduce a cystitum, which is a bent needle, which is used to do the first step working on the lens, which is the capsulotomy. Once the capsulotomy has started, I complete the continuous curvilinear capsular axis using Utrata forceps. Effectively, what we're doing here is opening up the outer shell of the lens or the cataract to gain access to what's underneath. Once we've completed the capsular excess, we go in with what's called balanced salt solution, which is just fluid that we shove underneath the capsule around the remaining portion of the lens to loosen things. This allows us to spin the lens later in the case. We're now ready for phaco emulsification, where we use ultrasound energy on this probe to start breaking up the lens. A cataract is hard, kind of like a nut, and this probe breaks it up. Using a second instrument, we can then crack it in half. And then, using a mixture of techniques, this one known as chopping, we can break the lens into smaller pieces. We currently have two quadrants in one hemisphere, and now we've broken it into four quadrants, and we're ready to start removing those quadrants. You can see how easily they move now that we've started to remove some pieces and we've completed that hydro dissection. You'll notice that I keep the ultrasound probe, or the phaco emulsification probe, mostly in the center of the eye, and I use the second instrument to do most of the work. This is because the phaco emulsification probe is actually a bit sharp, and our goal here is to make sure we're gentle to all of the structures of the eye. We're now switching probes from a sharp one to a soft one, known as the irrigation and aspiration probe. All of the wispy material you see here is known as the cortex. The cortex is what is left inside of the capsule that the cataract lives in. And in this step, we're removing all of those pieces of cortex. Once the cortex itself is removed, Invariably, there are little pieces left behind that we have to polish off the capsule. What you see me doing here where I'm rubbing back and forth is I'm actually polishing posterior capsule. The goal of this is to minimize fibrosis in an effort to minimize posterior capsular opacification. Once we're polished, I put more viscoelastic inside of the eye to reinflate the capsular bag. Once inflated, I use a larger blade, a 2.75 millimeter blade, to enlarge the incision. That is the first step that's unique to the light adjustable lens. I then introduce a capsular polisher to polish the anterior capsular leaflets here in order to remove any remnants of what's known as lens epithelial cells, again to minimize any posterior capsular opacification that could possibly occur. Once we feel that we have removed enough of the lens epithelial cells, we're able to remove the polisher from the eye, and the next step is to implant the lens. The light adjustable lens is a three-piece lens, and that means that there is what's called the optic, and then two haptics. What you see, the yellow part is the optic, and then those two blue things are the haptics. I load my own light adjustable lenses just so that I know that it's done perfectly. I'm putting it inside of the cartridge and then I'm going to switch my instrument to something called a Lester, where I actually have to push the front haptic into the nozzle of this cartridge. Once it's sufficiently in there, I close them and I am able to take the cartridge and put it inside of what's called the injector. That's what you see right here. The injector itself is different than other lenses, although it works quite similarly. I advance the lens a little bit further, and then I introduce it into the eye. And what you can see is the front haptic going forward, and the lens is starting to go in, and in a one moment it pops open. You see that there's what's called the trailing haptic still sticking out of the wound, 
and I use an instrument to dial it into the eye and into the capsular bag. Once I'm satisfied that the entire lens is in the capsular bag, I go back in with the irrigation and aspiration and remove all of the residual viscoelastic. The goal is to remove all of the viscoelastic from in front of and behind the lens. During this step, it's not uncommon to find little wispy pieces of cortex that you still want to remove. It's important to take your time to remove all this viscoelastic to ensure that the pressure on the first day after surgery is not too elevated from retained viscoelastic. Once I've removed all the viscoelastic and I feel that the lens is adequately centered, I hydrate the incision using balanced salt solution. The cornea is like a sponge, it likes to soak in water. And by hydrating the incisions, we can get the incision to seal without any sutures. Now recall with the light adjustable lens, we enlarged our incision a little bit. And therefore, it's at risk of not closing or sealing as easily. This right here is called a wex cell sponge, where I'm checking to see if there's any leak from outside of the wound. I feel that there is a small slow leak at this point still, so I hydrate some more. Once I hydrate some more, I feel that the eye is nice and firm. And once the incision is adequately hydrated, my final step is to inject dexamethasone, moxifloxacin, and ketorlac, a steroid and antibiotic. I adjust the pressure as needed. And with that, the surgery is complete. After the surgery, it was back to the post-op area. Ran for a round one shaper. Okay. All went well. And then I was told to lay back and relax. But in five minutes, I was up and eating the snack. And less than 20 minutes after surgery, I was out the door and in the parking lot. So I'm walking out of surgery outside the uh, surgery center. Everything, as far as I know, went well. Uh, it was a quick procedure. The vision is obviously really blurry right now, and I'm wearing the special glasses that block the UV light which, as you know, can change the prescription in the lens uncontrollably. So you have to block out the light except for the specific light um, used during the light adjustment process. And we'll speak more about that in the future. But for right now, surgery is done and uh, we're good to go. Fingers crossed it continues. So that was my surgery. I can't say I remember any of it because I don't. I remember rolling into the operating room and chatting for a few seconds with the anesthesiologist. And then I remember being in the recovery area. What happened in between there, if I didn't have the video, I wouldn't have been able to share that with you. So I'm home now, as you can tell by the fact that I'm wearing these lovely glasses. These are the glasses that RX Sight, the manufacturer of the light adjustable lens, provides patients. Because as you know, since this is a light adjustable lens, you have to guard against extraneous uh, UV rays hitting that uh, lens in an uncontrolled manner because it could change the prescription theoretically. Now, many doctors at this point don't have their patients wear the glasses inside, only outside, because the lens now has what's called active shield, which is in the lens itself, there's some shielding from ultraviolet light. But probably because the lens was approved originally with the glasses protocol, the manufacturer still says you have to wear them during all waking hours, both inside and outside. So how, how was my vision? Um, <laughs> as expected, it's terrible. It's bad. It's worse than it was when I had the cataract in it, but that's to be expected. I just had surgery and the eye is still really dilated. So when I say the vision is bad, what do I mean? Really blurry. I mean, it's like somebody smeared Vaseline on my eye and I see shimmering, uh, all around the outside of the lens. Again, from what I've been told, it's perfectly 
um, normal for, for that to be what I'm seeing at this point. No pain. Tomorrow is my first follow-up visit uh, with my doctor. So we'll see how we do tomorrow. But so far today, everything seems to be going exactly as planned. So thank you for coming along and we'll check back in tomorrow to see what day one is like after the implantation of the light adjustable lens.